Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans, and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES. Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES-TV. Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hello, Miss Poppy. Hello, Peg. Looking great. Alfred Richard, it's so nice to have him back. Movie critic for WWL TV. Hi, Alfred. Hello, Hello. there, Peggy. Great making, to be back. Oh, good. And making his Steppin' Out debut, children's book author Steve Scafidi. Hey, Steve. Hello, hey. welcome. And good also to be. with us, Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News and theatercriticism.com. Hey, hey Poppy, it is so nice to have a longtime local chef in the spotlight. Oh, Peggy, of course, we're talking about Chef Frank Brightston. But the wonderful thing I really want to point out, too, is that all the fun we've always had is back. It's time for the New Orleans food and wine experience again. And this year, Frank is being honored with the Ella Brennan Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, this year, that gala is going to be held at the Four Seasons Hotel. It's going to be more fabulous than it's ever been. And really now, Fee, cheers to 30 years, because once they kick it off on Tuesday, June 7th with that tribute, it'll continue with Wednesday night wine dinners. There are 17 to choose from this year all over the city. And I urge everybody to treat yourself this year to Vinola, also at the Four Seasons Hotel. That's Thursday, June the 9th from 2 to 4.30 p.m. You're going to be able to taste rare and fine wines paired with award-winning chef's food. And then Friday evening and Saturday afternoon, it rolls right into the grand tastings that are at the Sugar Mill. There's a great deal on a package price for both Friday evening and Saturday afternoon, just $215 for both. And I don't know how to have more fun than that. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, kudos to them because it's been very challenging to stage anything these days um, and especially something that has to do with our you know our, our restaurant scene that's trying to come back as well so God bless those folks right absolutely it is such delicious fun if you've never been to Nalfi go this year. You're going to love it if you're a wine lover. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Poppy. And over to Alfred. So much activity in the movie and TV production arena right now, huh? That is the case. And just one more note, Frank Brightson really deserves that award. Uh, congratulations to Frank. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe that Hollywood South, of course, came to a basically a complete stop during the height of the pandemic. Yes, it's still going on, the pandemic it is. But Hollywood South is getting back. In fact, as of this time, the Louisiana Film Commission is knowing that there are 23 television and movie projects being filmed in the area from Biloxi, Mississippi, all the way to Lafayette, Louisiana. So there are a lot of white trucks that are being around and a lot of productions. And I want to pass on a couple of them. And just as a note, I have appeared in some of those projects, so they are still under production, so I'm not going to be able to throw a flag one way or another if it's good or not. But I will say this. This is what you'll see, and in some cases you've seen some of these stars in the area. The film, first one, 57 Seconds. Now, 57 Seconds stars Academy Award winner 
and one of the great voices of our time, Morgan Freeman. He is a tech guru, and the tech blogger who is in this film is played by Josh Hutcherson. So you put these two together. It's about, let's put it this way, the tech guru is being interviewed by the tech blogger when suddenly the blogger prevents an attack on him and they discover a ring, not a ring of power like a Green Lantern, but a ring that changes time and backs everything back 57 seconds. So if you have the opportunity to back up time for even that short period of time, it could change your life and your experience. That film is presently being shot in the Lafayette area, in Lafayette, Louisiana, and some areas of the North Shore. Still no indication on when it will come out, but it looks like, from everything I've learned, probably a late if not a late uh, 1922, late 2022, 2023 filming. The next film I want to talk about is one that I did work on. If I showed you some of the pictures I was in, it would be an R-rated picture. But anyway, it is an AMC series based on another Anne Rice novel. And this is The Mayfair Witches, mm. based on Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches. The main stars are Alexandria, Alexandra Daddario. She plays the main witch in this case. And for those people who remember him from L.A. Law and, of course, from Clash of the Titans, release the Kraken for Harry Hamlin. Harry Hamlin plays the leader of a family, uh, basically of a coven of witches, and he is the most powerful one. And they are filming in and around the uptown area and all around the New Orleans area, and I had the joy of being on that set. Again, Mayfair Witches, it is based on the book series by Anne Rice, is filming now all the way through August, the heat of August in New Orleans. But they're going to be filming, and it will be airing on the AMC channel in the fall of 2022. Well, I'm also, I was really curious when I heard, of course, that you were going to mention this, who Lasher was being played by. And apparently it's Jack Houston, who I remember his breakout role was, and he's the grandson of John Houston, you know, the esteemed director, of course. Right. And Angelica Houston just happens to be his aunt, right? <laughs> but uh, it, some of us may remember uh, Boardwalk Empire. And That's he right. played, it was really rather tragic, but he was the World War I veteran with a disfigured face who was the marksman. He was incredible in that. And he's done, other, of course, lots of stuff since. But um, I think he's going to be a fine lasher. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be an excellent lasher. Again, they are really getting top main talent to be in these promotions and in these films and TV series. In my second segment, I'll talk about a couple more. Because as I said, they're 23. And if I were to talk about all of them, the show wouldn't be called Stepping Out. So. <laughs> That's right. Also, I'm very thrilled, though, that the executive producers of all the Anne Rice um, uh, material um, is Christopher. Uh, That's Christopher right. Christopher Rice, the son. And of course, Anne Rice, before she passed, she was also. So they were in control. So you know it's going to be good. They were in control. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Interview with the Vampire, yeah. and I may be able right. to talk about a little special there about Okay, that. thank you. And over to Steve. Steve, um, so for many years you've, you've been in the, uh, in the TV production and film industry, but now you've turned, the last few years, you've turned your attention to children's books. Tell us about the persona that you uh, embrace. Okay. Well, you know, I've been in the industry started in the industry back in the late 70s, mid-70s actually. And uh, I've always written. I've been a writer my entire career. And uh, my dad was the original Papa Dude. So he passed away about 30 years ago. Before he died, I said, Dad, one day I'm going to do something to honor you. Who would have ever thought that 30 years later I'd be writing a series of children's books entitled Hey Papa Dude. So, now that is a term of endearment that I know in the New Orleans area is very, is very dear, isn't it? So that's what you called your dad. Yeah, everybody that oh. knew me when I was growing up called him Papa Dude. And uh, yeah, so Papa Dude, I, you know what? When the pandemic started, uh, I was hunkered down like everybody else. And uh, I was actually getting ready to produce a documentary about the no call. I was focused on that. Mm. And the uh, course, pandemic yeah. hit, and everything came to a screeching halt in the film business. And I decided, 
you know what? I'm going to write a children's book, one book. <laughs> My wife works in the children's business. Her and I owned a children's store, Nia's Just for Kids, for over 20 years. And uh, now she's on the uh, other side of the business, the wholesale side. And I told her I was going to write a children's book, and she kind of laughed like, okay, go have, <laughs> go sit in the backyard and write your children's book. And as of today, I've written 10 books, nine are published. My wife and I started our own publishing company, Nia's Just for Kids. My name's not on the book. It's by Papa Dude. And we have a new book that's coming out uh, called What Do We Do Now? And I've got a copy right here. Yeah, we'll show that as a, your pick a little and, bit later. So and it's we'll let it be a cliffhanger. <laughs> and it's coming out for hurricane season. How cool is that? Yeah, very cool. Well, great. When we come back to you, though, we want to hear about how you created these books. But right now, let's go over to Alan. Well, Peggy, I wanted to let people know before they shut down their current production of Treasure Island how thoroughly wonderful the NOLA Project's latest production is. Uh, again, it's a partnership with the New Orleans Museum of Art. And uh, writers A.J. Allegra, uh, James Bartell, Alex Martinez-Wallace have literally keel-hauled Robert Louis Stevenson's original work and turned it on its head. And, of course, we all know what the head is on board a ship. This kid-friendly show at the amphitheater features an evenly split crew, a troupe of male and female staff, fantastic performances by the entire troupe of players, telling the story of young Jim Hawkins, his mother Ruth, and a ship's cook, come pirate in disguise, Long John Silver. Uh, and as expected, these delightful performances are really turned by the entire ensemble. You can see that they have wonderful she sea shanties and all sorts of other things that will delight kids and adults alike. Directed by A.J. Allegra with his assistant Sarah Chatelaine. That production also features music by Jack Kraft. And again, everybody will love this. If they only have, unfortunately, one final performance, but if you have a chance, go check it out in the Sculpture Garden. Now, meanwhile, here's now the key for me. This is a jumping off point to talk about their new season for next year. Theater for the Bold, the NOLA Project. They have quite a bit packed in just four shows. Here's what they have. They start off in September with Sherry Bohannon's Craigslisted. That's a comedy that's set in the recent past when everything you could wish for was available on Craigslist. <laughs> then Gabrielle Reisman's comedic take on Chekhov's The Seagull has been subtitled as The Seagull or How to Eat It, which I'm equally <laughs> looking forward to seeing. <laughs> then there's the take on the morality play Everyman, which they've now titled Everybody by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, and that's going to be seen in January of next year. And finally, we have to wait an entire year, unfortunately, but it'll be the 10th anniversary of their joint productions with Noma, and they're bringing back their very first production that, of course, is going to be Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. That's their 2023 season for 22-23, and again, you'll have to wait a bit because the tickets don't go on sale until July the 11th. Meanwhile, Peggy, last Sunday night, I was able to go over to uh, uh, join in, in the kickoff for a brand new production company that's Fat Squirrel uh, Productions. Artistic director uh, Andrea Watson, seen there with Mary and Ken Pauly, was very excited to announce her season. On hand was also James Wright with talented local actress Lucy Faust. She's going to be a playwright who's going to be honored uh, to kick off their season. Again, that's going to be upstairs at Bryant Park in the virtual shadow of the Crescent City Connection. Lucy will join forces with Bradley Warshower and Stephanie Garrison in Bestival. That's a series of uh, one acts. Uh, that'll be at Bryant Park. Then in August, Lucy Faust leads the cast of performers in Pam Gu's Dusa Star, Fish and Vibe. That's a play about four women sharing a flat in London. And then at the Fortress of Lushington, Justin Maxwell's Easy to Say, The Canopic Jar of My Sins, a medieval morality play for latter-day postmoderns, will hopefully be easier to understand than its title. By the way, canopic jars, in case you don't know, were used by ancient Egyptians to hold body parts ah, during mummification. Okay. <laughs> and Dane Rhodes will lead a All full right. cast on the Scottish play in December at the Fortress of Lushington, the Bywater. If you want to check it all out and find out more about it, check out my NOLA Theater Talk Show on Facebook and on YouTube. You can find out the information uh, there as well. Okay, so your NOLA Theater, that's coming up too. And, uh, That'll be on always. Monday night. And you've been, how long have you been doing that show? Well, I started with the pandemic in uh, mm -hmm. April of 2020. So All right. there you go, the Facebook group, the Facebook page okay. for theatercriticism.com, and oh. my own YouTube channel. Thank, Thank you, you. Alan. Right. And back over to Poppy. Well, we're going to stay in the wine theme, and I just want to make sure everybody is aware of 
Monica Bourgeois and Neil Gernon, two locals, who are the brilliant enophiles behind vending machine wines. Hmm. Now, they started that business in 2006, and if you don't recognize the brand name, that would be Crooked Mare, Double Shotgun, and, oh, Peg, has to be one of your favorite wines, Ain't Dare No More. <laughs> but they purchased Pontchartrain Vineyards oh, last wow. year, oh. and they have remade it into wine. Wild Bush Farm and Vineyard, which is in Bush, Louisiana. And I want to congratulate them because here we have their first release. Um, this is the first Wild Bush wine. They're calling it Kids Got Heart. I think we've got a picture of Neil applying the labels by hand. This is a real <laughs> oh. labor of love for these two brilliant, brilliant winemakers. Um, so what is happening over there? Their tasting room is open Thursday through Sunday, noon until 4 p.m. Um, please get reservations if there's six and more. There's cheese and charcuterie available. But their Jazz in the Vines concert series is taking place with kid-friendly picnicking in the vineyard on Saturday nights. This Saturday, it's Mia Borders. On Saturday, June 11th, it's going to be 10-gallon tinfoil hat, which is a remake of Morning 40 Federations in a psychedelic blues country band. And the gates open at 5. The music starts at 6.30. The best deal is up until 4 o'clock that day, you can get your tickets online Two adults and a bottle of wine for just $28. Ooh, ooh. If you're bringing along some teenagers, they're $5. Kids 12 and under get in free. They have local food trucks. They have their wines available for oh. sale. And it's just a great time. So if you don't know Monica and Neil yet, get out and meet them because they are my kind of New Orleanians. Thank you so much, Poppy. And over to Alfred. You know, we were talking about the Mayfair witches a little while ago, and of course, Anne Rice's dominance over New Orleans, even though she has since gone on, is still quite powerful. And AMC seems to have picked up the ball because this was one of the last projects that Anne Rice really oversaw along with her son. And it is... The interview with the Vampire. Yes, a new version. This will be done for AMC. And there you see the new Lestat. This is Sam Reed. He will play Lestat. And this is going to be a little bit different than the Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt version of Interview with the Vampire. A more multi-ethnic casting. Besides Sam Reed as Lestat, we have a nice a young man, Jacob Anderson, he will play Lewis, and he is in that. And I, well, again, for notice, I have to let it be known, I played a part in this film. Uh, I'm not going to say if I was a victim or not, but you'll have to find this out. The Interview with the Vampire season has filmed, has wrapped up, and will air on AMC this fall, and it is the first season. I can say there will be a second season okay. of Interview with the Vampire, so they will be coming back to New Orleans in the fall. Mm -hmm. And even though New Orleans has a lot of love for Nicolas Cage, and Nicolas Cage has a lot of love for New Orleans, the film Renfield has wrapped up filming in which Nicolas Cage he does not play Renfield in this one. He plays Count Dracula in this film. <laughs> and one of the other great actors and actresses in this film is Aquafina. You remember her from Crazy Rich Asians. Well, she is back in the Renfield cast. I had the opportunity to work in that film as well, too. I'm keeping busy. busy. I'm good. keeping as busy as I can. <laughs> Directed by Chris McKay, and this release date right now looks like April 2023. But again, New Orleans and this area, it's Hollywood South is back. And with 23 productions around the area, you'll see trucks and production trucks just about everywhere. All right. Thank you so much. And back over to Steve. And Steve, um, with these 10 books that, that you've now uh, created, your marketing um, approach is different because most of the time you would think a book would be in a bookstore. But you do um, have them at a lot of the children's boutiques, which would be your audience, of course, there too. But um, in terms of the way you craft the books themselves with do you write the text before are, are you having assistance on the actual artwork tell us about how you put together your books well 
first of all, I come up with an idea. So my, my first book was about dogs. I wanted to go for, you know, what's a great story and what's, wh where's a big audience? And everybody loves a dog. So from there, uh, I did a cooking, one about cooking and outer space and uh, road <laughs> trips and stuff like that. So what I usually do is I come up with an idea. My latest book is uh, What Do We Do Now? And I came up with a theme like, hey, Papa Dude, and then it asks a question. So every book answers a question. So the new book is What Do We Do Now? And obviously, if a hurricane's coming uh, our way, everybody wants to know, hey, what do we do? So Papa Dude uh, will take the kids on a journey into the world of natural disasters. So I outline the story. I put the story together. I do all of the layout and the artwork in advance. Wow. Then I send it to my artist. And then I say, OK, uh, I'm not very good at this and that and the other thing. I want to clean that up. And then she does a great job of doing the things that I don't do so well. So <laughs> I've already got the book. Technically, I could publish the book that I write. but. Um, uh, the book's already written. It's, it's all about the artwork after that. And uh, so she sends me back the, the final art. I stick it in the book and uh, send it to the printer, and we're good to go. So for more information, going to that website, heypapadude.com. Uh, and you also go to schools. I can see, see that from a wonderful photo, too. So I just, did a, I just did a reading. I just right. did a reading at McGee, uh, St. Mary Magdalene. We did another reading. I love reading for the kids. Okay. And uh, we're in 50 stores across America. We're in a, uh, quite a few stores in the New Orleans area. Like you said, mostly uh, children's boutiques. Mm -hmm. But we're in some bookstores, too. The thing okay. is that the smaller bookstores uh, are going away. It's yeah. just not as many around well, as they used to be. we wish them well. Well, thank you so much, Steve. And now back over to Alan. Well, Peggy, the first La Fête Creole, that is the uh, uh, festival put on by the Opera Creole people. And of course, it's being presented by uh, Giovanna Joseph and her daughter, Aria, who you, you see uh, here. Uh, they are proud to present a uh, continuing festival. Uh, and it started uh, tonight, but uh, they're going to continue tomorrow night, offering Francois et Totelard, an opera written by the very first American opera composer of color, Edmond Dede. And uh, then Saturday night, uh, renowned uh, soprano Mary Mary Elizabeth Williams will be seen. Uh, she was last seen here with the New Orleans Opera Association in the roles of Tosca and Leonora in Il Travatore. That's La Fête Creole, and it's all happening at the Marini Opera House. You can get more information by going to their website at www.operacreole.org. Also, Peggy, coming up in the Bywater, not far away, uh, Betty and Bruce. <laughs> this is the stage persona of performers Raina Hickman and Jason Winfield at the Always Lounge next week. The two over share and over belt as they're trapped <laughs> in New Orleans. This will be for two nights playing at the Always. You can check it out at 2240 St. Claude Avenue. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. And now time for our picks of the week. Poppy. Couple of seats still left at Poppy's Pop-Up Drag Brunch this Sunday at Two Jack's Restaurant. Yeah, it's a great time. Anyway, next Thursday, if you missed coming to see Tony Mandina's Kitchen book signing when we were on the West Bank, here is the first East Bank signing, and yes, there will be meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yes. Alfred. Yum. All right. Foley. I do. One evening, two experiences were inspired by the late Michael Martin. We'll be doing this last weekend, May 27th through the 29th at 6 p.m. at the Domino at 3044 St. Claude Avenue. Tickets available at streetcarcollective.com or at the door, $20 or $45 for VIP. Go see it. It is wonderful. Okay, Steve. Now, you have a little crab guy. You want to hold little crab guy up to? <laughs> this is Charlie ah. Crab. He's Papa Dude's best friend. So uh, <laughs> when I first came up with the story, I had the whole story written without Charlie. And then I said, you know, Papa Dude needs a sidekick. <laughs> so okay. Charlie Crabb. But uh, I'd like to let everybody know that uh, my new book, What Do We Do Now, is coming out. Uh, it'll be in stores probably in the next week or so. Hurricane season's right around the corner. So I thought it's, it's a great time to release this book. 
And you can get the book on the website uh, at heypapadu.com. But uh, we're going to have it out to the stores. We're going to start distributing next week. So okay. hey, just Papa got the books in from the printer, and we're ready to go. Thank you. Alan. Peggy, I want everybody to know that even though theaters are open, there are still some streaming options out there. For those of you who are musical fans, Dear Evan Hansen, the film starring Ben Platt, is now available on HBO Max. So those of you who have that already can go check that out. He does a great job opposite Julianne Moore, although he uh, lost a lot of weight for this particular role in order to be able to look young. He does a great job. And for those who have not seen it, I want to recommend Oren Jacoby's amazing documentary called On Broadway. It has some amazing people in it, Alec Baldwin, August Wilson, John Lithgow. I mean, you can just imagine uh, this is all about Broadway's recovery from near teetering onto uh, destruction. Uh, again, you can see that on uh, Broadway uh, on Apple TV and Prime TV, and I'll see you at the theater. Thank you. And now my picks. I have plenty of them on Friday at noon at Melba's Poor Boys. That's on Elysian Fields. If you dine there, you can meet and get a free book from children's book author and healthy eating activist Camilla Alves McConaughey. And she, the book is called Just Try One Bite. The uh, book concerns children who are picky eaters. She is the wife of F of actor Matthew McConaughey and the mother of three. Friday through Sunday, check out the annual Greek Fest food. Here are some of amazing Greek pastries. And of course, the fest is so well known for those. Tours of the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral. Greek beer, wine, lots of food. Go to gfno.org for details. Opa. That, absolutely. <laughs> that dynamic, locally-based music group, the Imagination Movers, will be performing on Saturday, 1 p.m. at the Louisiana Children's Museum, full of original songs for kids, even had their own uh, Disney uh, series a few years back. On Saturday, the Patio Planters are holding their Secret Gardens of the Vieux Carré Tour featuring six gardens. You can buy your tickets online at eventbrite.com or pick them up at the Cabildo on Jackson Square. For more info on the self-guided tour, go to patioplanters.net. There will be a virtual panel concerning the 1984 World's Fair. Next Thursday at 6 p.m., the panel features a national expert on World's Fairs in America from the 60s on, and you can hear from such locals as Liz Williams, Keith Twitchell, and me. <laughs> to sign up, go to globalneworleans.com, or rather, .org. There is a relatively new gallery space called Araby Visual Arts, and that's in the St. Claude Arts Building at 6707 St. Claude Avenue. Four artists led by Christopher Ryan focus on hands and feet as their topic. The name of the show is Extremities, now open through June 14th. Go to arabyvisualarts.com slash extremities for more information. Thank you all so very much, and thank you very much for watching. Have a nice weekend, holiday weekend. Bye-bye. I sing it. Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES TV. Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES.